This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard and today we got more Gold Paladin and it's Spectral Duke Dragon returning from Limit Break in the uh, part one of special series with all the reprints and closing the end to V series. So we got a cool restander in Gold Paladin, which is kind of fun so um basically one thing i do want to mention is that i never really got to play a spectral duke deck before because spectral duke came out before i started playing the game or at least it was relevant before i started playing vanguard so being able to finally pick up spectral duke is kind of interesting for me because it was never really like nostalgic enough for me but Gabe played Spectral Duke, so maybe I'll let him play the deck in the future. We'll see how that goes, see if it gives him a little bit of nostalgia. But um, yeah, so I'm actually really glad I was able to build this deck because there's still like a looming like semblance of Spectral like memories amongst the team here. So I'm glad I was able to put it together. All right, you guys don't want to hear me talk. You guys want to see the deck, so let's get right into it. Our starter is going to be any of the Gold Paladin starters, but like again, for nostalgia's sake, we're going with Spring Breeze Messenger because I remember at one point Gabe ran Spring Breeze Messenger in the main deck of his Spectral Duke deck just for like some cheesy plays, so Spring Breeze Messenger makes a return into the Spectral Duke deck. On to the grade threes. We are running four copies of Spectral Duke Dragon. So the skill, Spectral Duke deck, Spectral Duke <laughs> Dragon is, if you have a black Dragonite Vortimer in your soul, this gets a thousand power. And if your opponent's Vanguard is at grade three or greater, this gets plus one crit. So finally, we have an Excel deck with a 13k base, which is pretty dope. The other skill is Van Auto. Once per turn at the end of the battle that it attacked, counter boss one, retire three rear guards, stand this unit, gets drive minus one. Um, if your damage zone is four or more cards, it gets drive plus one instead of minus one. So it's got that limit break aesthetic with the four or more damage. It has the, pretty much the same skill as the original Spectre Duke where you uh, retire three things to stand it. So it still has that Shadow Paladin-esque, you know, vibes to it. In darkness. So yeah, we're just running four. Spectral Duke, main right target of the deck. Restanding Vanguards are cool, so gotta run a max them out. Next up, we're running three copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Percival because this thing is versatile as hell. First skill is Van only, continuous, all your units on additional rears get 5k. So all the stuff on the Excel markers. Other skill, van or rear, when it's placed, if your vanguard's grade three or greater, canvas one, discard a card from your hand, get imaginary get to excel. Search your deck or your drop zone for up to one Oath Liberator Aglavale, call it. And if you search your deck, your shuffle, and uh, you can only use the ability of Percival um, once per turn with the same card name. So you can't like, you know, throw down three Percivals at once. That'd be kind of dumb, but it'd be cool. So, Obviously, the main point of Percival is because you search out a card, you get an Excel gift, so you can make more pokes and attacks. Um, but I don't want to max it out because it's not really a necessity when you get into the late game. Too many Excels in the front doesn't really matter because you're not running front triggers. You're not getting power like you did with Gurgit. You're not multi-attacking through like calling rear guards during the battle phase you know, as much in this deck, so having additional excels is good, but we're not really making as big of a use of it as we are in this deck than we would in previous decks in the past. But because it is a unit that calls another unit just to fill the board from drop or from deck, gives you hand, gives you more front row to attack with, it's just a good, like, card to have overall. But three copies works fine. All right, next up, this is where it gets fun. I'm running one copy of Full Cavalier Dragon. So Full Cavalier Dragon skill 
is Van or Rear Act. Uh, Soul Blast 1 once per turn. Look at the top card of your deck. Call it. And one of your Rangards gets 5k. So, since Spectre Duke is going to restand anyways, you might as well give him more power. So if he gets 5k for the turn, it's now an 18k by itself. Restands with triggers going to be you know, 18, 28, whatever it ends up being. So, that can be really cool and helpful. The extra 5k might make a difference. So, full Cavaliers there. It's a good retire target. Um, you know, whatever you call from the deck is probably going to be retired anyway, so it's good for Spectral Duke. So, making use of full Cavalier is really nice. Um, and one more grade one, or grade three. I'm running White Hair in the Moon Shadow Pelinor. So, at first I was running two copies of full Cavalier. Do it this way. And it worked fine, but then... I saw a list on Twitter, a Japanese list that ran Pelinor, and I thought about it, and it made sense, so I'm running it. So, uh, hand ability, at the end of the battle that your rear guard's attack hits, uh, if your opponent's at grade 3 or greater, um, or has to hit a vanguard, uh, you count plus 1, soul blast 3, ride this card as Stan, and he gets drive minus 1. So. The main reason we're running Pelinor is because it makes for an additional vanguard attack. So it's that final push for that extra damage if your opponent's thinking, oh, I only have to deal with the vanguard attacks. You let the rear guard swing, it hits, they're at 5 damage, then you just ride Pelinor, push for, for an additional swing, get a drive check, you know. It, it applies some pressure, and since this deck doesn't really soul blast at all, but you get a lot of Soul Charge engine, I figured the best way to make use of it would be to do Pelinor. Um, also, just like how with the Nostalgia with the Spring Breeze Messenger, Gabe ran one copy of Pelinor in his Spectral Duke deck, just so that during the ride chain, if you called out Pelinor, you could just, you know, <laughs> ride onto it while your opponents agree to. It was just a, a fun play. Also, you know, Spring Breeze, the original one could look you top three, call something, so that was a way to pull up Pelinor too. So, more nostalgia of the original Spectral Duke deck that Gabe had. Alright, so that was it for the grade threes. Moving on to the grade twos. We are running four copies of Black Dragon Knight Vortimer. So, Vortimer's skill is if you have Scout of Darkness Vortimer in your soul, this gets 1k, so it's on van or rear. So you could have a 10k Vanguard or just a 10k Beat Stick on the Rear Guard Circle. Uh, when this is retired from rear by your card's ability, you put this into your soul and you counter charge. So, Soul Charge Engine counter charging for a Spectral Duke's cost. Um, and then the other skill is Auto when it's rode upon by Spectral Duke Dragon. You look at top 5 cards of your deck, call 2 things, and shuffle your deck. So, unlike the original Vortimers, which had you retire something, look at top two, call two, now you can just straight up ride on Vortimer, top five, call two things, fill up the board, super easy. Um, you get the skill basically once, because you're just going to ride on the grade three once, but great right target. Um, the 1k doesn't really do much. Um, like Overall, this card's main purpose is just to be fodder, just to be retired, which is nice. But it's really a whatever card. But because it's what the card that gives Spectra Duke that extra 1k defensively, it's a really important card for the deck. So you want to run four of it. All right, next up for the grade twos, we're running three copies of Oath Liberator Aglaville. So we're running Aglaville because we're running Percival. Um, Aglaville is when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you kind of blast one, look at three cards, call one from among them, the rest go to bottom. So it makes a good alternate ride target if you don't have Vortimer in hand. And since you can still call Vortimer, retire it from Spectre Duke, shove it in the soul after it's been retired, you can still get Vortimer in the soul later, so it's not a big deal if you miss ride. Other skill of Aglaville is when it attacks, when it's on the rear guard Circle, choose another one of your guards, shove to soul, Gets 10k, and at the end of the battle, it returns to your hand. From playtesting, this is kind of like contradicting for the most part because you can't really like 
shove your rear guards into the soul while this is on the board because you just lost two targets for retiring from Spectral Duke. So you do have to fill up a pretty big board to really maximize taking advantage of Oath Liberator Aglavale's skill. We don't have ways to call during the battle phase like with Gurgit, Platinazel, or uh, the skills of like other units that call during the battle phase like Howl. So putting this back in your hand and then calling it out doesn't really do much. You could run cards like Mox Slash Dragon, but since it's, you're not getting a power bonus like through Gurgit, there's not really much to offer with using Mox Slash Dragon. Um, so that's my only like, you know, I guess you could say like my critique of using Oflago Veil, but it does bounce back to hand. It's a unit that gains power. It's a search target for Percival to fill the board. So even if you don't pull off the skill and you just choose to retire it just to get off Spectre Duke Dragon's skill, that's fine too. So guaranteed search target. Uh, it's a good ride. So Agavo is a good card. Lastly for grade twos, grade two lineup is really short, but it works just fine. Three copies of Advance of the Black Chains Kaiden. So since we're running Kaiden, we're running Howl, and Howl is a great card, so <laughs> I'm gonna run Kaiden with it too. Uh, Kaiden came in the special series set with Spectral Duke as well, so there's an implication that they're kind of meant to be played together, and it's pretty obvious for the most part. Its ability is when it's placed, uh, so either from the deck or from your hand. Can plus one, discard a card. Look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, the rest get shoveled back into your deck, and if you have Howl on your rear, uh, on your van or rear guard circle, you get to draw a card. So the card you discarded, you're just gonna draw another one back, so you didn't really lose anything. You just had to pay the counterblast. And um, Howl gets bonuses if Kaiden's on your board as well. That's nice. Uh, if you need to fill a board, call Kaiden, counterblast. You call the retire target, so helping you fill the board for Spectre Duke's retire. And that's pretty much for the most part all we're using Kaiden for. I don't really want to run four just because it doesn't do anything when you ride it. And later in the game, you know, you're going to call Kaiden just to, you know, maybe you're not even going to have Howl on the board, so you'll waste the discard. Um, it's really up to you, but for the most part, I think that Kaiden at three works fine. You're going to fill the board with uh, other cards, uh, such as, you know, Percival, Full Cavalier, you have um, just triple driving from the Spectra Duke, so you'll have a big enough hand to just throw some stuff down, and you're probably going to be getting through the game super fast anyway, so not really having to worry about the number of Kaidens you're running won't make that big of a deal. But I might, in the future, if I decide to, drop a Grade 3 or a Grade 1 just to run another Kaiden, just, you know, to fill up the forward faster, but it is ultimately up to you. Next up, we got grade ones. So we gotta finish up the Vortimer chain. We got four copies of Scout of Darkness Vortimer. Uh, I like this Vortimer because it doesn't require you to have Dragon Whelp Vortimer in your soul for its skill, so that's cool. Uh, it's just similar to Jeffrey, so it's when it's placed, you look at the top seven for a Spectral Duke or a Black Dragon Knight Vortimer, add it to your hand. So obvious ride target for the most part. Other skill is when it is retired uh, by your card's ability, you put this into your soul and you give your van 5k. So this is probably the better retire target, arguably, from that I would assume than um, Vortimer. Even though Vortimer does pay back the cost, this is the card that's going to make your Vanguard beefier for that next swing for Spectral Duke. So that could make a big change in how much your opponent can guard for. So... That's something you consider, but overall, Vortimer's your right target, and even if you call it out on a rearguard circle, it's going to get retired, and your vanguard's going to get bonuses from it. So, going to run it at four. Next up, for grade ones, since we are running Kaiden, we are running Hoel, but we're running four copies. So, the reason we're running four Hoel is because the idea is that whatever you call in front of it is going to get power, and so even if you end up retiring what's in front of it, you know, you'll get to keep the hole in the back row for calling something in front of it the next turn. And you can use its skill to double up when you call them two of them in the same column. So what does hole do? 
if you don't know already. Continuous, uh, rear guard circle. Your other unit that's placed in the same column as this unit this turn uh, gets 5k. If Kaiden is on your Vanner rear, that gets 10k instead. So the very obvious thing about this play is, let's say, during the grade 2 turn, or my grade 2s, you're... You called out a Hoel. You know, it doesn't even have to be in in from the previous turn. I was gonna say if this was your turn before you rode, doesn't even matter. You ride Vortimer. Uh, you ride a Spectral Duke for your Grade Three turn. You use Vortimer's skill. You call two cards. One of those cards being Hoel. You put it behind Vanguard Circle. Now, because the unit that was placed this turn that is in the same column as it, um, you know, is in the same column as it, it gets five K. So now. That Spectral Duke Dragon for both swings that it's going to do is going to get 5k. And on that second swing, you'll maybe you'll boost on the second swing if you don't get the drive check. If you do get the additional drive check, maybe you'll boost on the first swing. Stand, keep the 5k, swing again with triple drive. And of course, if you have Kaiden, it's 10k instead. So now you have a, regardless if you boost or not, just because these two boys are on the board. So... That's really good in my opinion, so I want to max out Hull for that reason. It's also just really good in general wherever you put it in any of your back rows. Everything in front of it gets 5k, which is really nice. It sucks if you do have to retire it because then for the next turn, you know, you won't get that cool buff. But, you know, got to do what you got to do to win these games. So Hull is a great card. Seeing it with Kaiden is also great. Triple driving, you're going to see it often with the plus four damage. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about Ho. So I'm really excited to bring this card back into a deck where I feel like it's finally going to be maximized because you just keep riding grade threes, keep riding spectral, ju spectral dukes on top of each other. How gets that effect? Unit that was placed to this turn in the same column as it gets five to 10K and you just keep beating them with big Vanguard numbers. So yeah. Next up for grade ones. Uh, grade three searchers are great, so we keep running them. Four copies of Donnie Knight Gorbaduck. Uh, Van der Rear, continuous. If you call two or more things a turn, it gets 5k. Van der Rear, when it's placed from hand, look at five cards from the top of your deck. Search for a grade three among them. If you added a grade three, discard a card from your hand, and then of course shuffle your deck. So, pretty obvious. Alternative ride target to Vortimer, so you're never really missing out. And of course, you want to find Spectre Duke, you want to find Percival, might even want to find Full Cavalier, might even want to find Pelinor just to have it in your hand to set up for the the turn that you plan on killing your opponent. So, Vortimer is always a great card. Lastly, for grade ones, two copies of Dendrain. Dendrain's always been good. In this deck, it's kind of like, meh, it's there. But it's always good if you call it out with Titan, if you call it out with Vortimer's skill. Um, full Cavalier if you're lucky enough to top deck it, but overall you don't have a lot of cards that are going to be doing like a superior call effect, and it's an obvious retire target, so we don't want to run too much, and also there's space issues, so, but I think with the two copies, Dindrain does fine. So, Dindrain's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you Soul Blast 1, and you can either draw a card, or you can counter charge and give it 3k. So... My go-to is if I'm using Kaiden and I don't have Howl on the rear guard circles, if I see Dindrain, I'll know, oh, I can just Soul Blast and I'll get a draw so I can get my hand back. Or if um, if I call it out through Vortimer's skill, I'll know, sweet, I can just Soul Blast the two cards in my soul and get two draws if I call out both Dindrain somehow. Um, other than that, there's not a lot of superior call methods, so running the two copies is fine as is. You really don't really need the Dendrains. You could probably run like an additional Kaiden or like an additional Full Cavalier if you want to go more aggressive just for power plays. But, you know, it's got 10k shield, you're triple driving, you're going to get a lot of cards in your hand. So I think two Dendrain works fine. It's also a counter charge. If you really want to, you know, counter charge, use that extra counter blast for Percival skill, you know, things like that will come up. So that was it for grade ones. Onto triggers, Sentinels are pretty obviously going to be the four Halo Shield marks, which is your PGs when your when your units attack is being attacked. You guard with it, discard a card, perfect guard. 
So draw triggers are great. So four Halo Shield marks. They also came in the same set as Spectre Duke Dragon, so it makes it even easier for them to for you to grab them. So PG shouldn't be too much of an issue for building this deck. Uh, it's a restanding Vanguard, so we are running critical triggers. So we're running eight crit. Also, the fact that you are retiring rear guards kind of makes front triggers seem redundant, unless you just exclusively plan on retiring your back row. But since you're going to be attacking with your Vanguard second or most likely third, um, you want to use crits instead of fronts. Also, if you give crits to your Vanguard, it's already at a second crit, so you might as well make it three crits, and then that puts pressure on your opponent, you know? Vanguard swinging with three crits. It's like Sanctuary Guard, basically. So yeah, crits are the way to go for this deck. Ooh. And lastly, we got four heals. Elixir Sommelier. Following with the same theme, we got the, the black horse in there. So we're using the Sommelier heal trigger. More nostalgia and aesthetic. Um... But yeah, we're not we're not being super aggressive in this deck, so we wanna we run wanna run heals. So that was it for the deck profile. Um, overall, I think the deck is fun. Uh, in terms of meta, I really don't know where this deck stands. All I know is that Chaos Breaker is like really tough on it. Even though if um, you do choose to use the Force Marker to put the force on Spectral Duke, that would make a lot of sense because then you just swing with that force marker twice. So that's helpful in that case, but Chaos Breaker is just kind of, <laughs> it's kind of nuts for standard format, you know, bring back Locke at the very end. Um, but other than that, this deck is really, really fun for a standard deck, you know. Everyone loves a Vanguard that swings twice, and everyone loves a Vanguard that swings twice in a Paladin deck. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. I hope I can show you guys this deck off sometime in the future soon. And yeah, that's all I got to say. Leave your comments, questions, and concerns in the comments section below. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.